Hello grade 11s. You work through the mindset lessons on vectors and in this video we'll give you some problems that you can practice on. You'll need a pen, ruler and paper and a calculator with trig functions. You remember the aeroplane that accelerated and climbed. Here's the aeroplane again. The propeller creates a thrust force that moves the aeroplane forward and the air flowing over the wings creates a lift force that balances the weight of the aeroplane. Now the pilot increases the power. The aeroplane moves faster and the air moving faster over the wings increases the lift force. So the aeroplane moves upwards. The thrust vector is 2000 newtons and the lift vector is 500 newtons. Do a scale drawing of the vectors and measure the resultant r and the angle of climb theta. In your drawing, use a scale of 1 cm to 200 newtons. You'll need a protractor to measure the angle theta. Work out the resultant force r on the aeroplane using the theorem of Pythagoras. Pythagoras does not work for all triangles. Why can you use Pythagoras on this triangle? Here is the forces board again, and you can see a hand holding the middle weight up. The weights on the three strings are each three newtons. When the weight in the middle can hang freely, in what directions will the strings lie? First, do a rough sketch of the strings as you think they will lie when the three equal forces are acting on them. Sketch the force vectors acting on the knot in the middle. What do you know about these three vectors? The angles between the strings are equal. Think of a reason why that is so. Now you know that the angles are equal, do a scale drawing of the vectors using a scale of 3 cm to 1 newton. Draw the resultant that balances the force that acts vertically downward. Draw the resultant and two other vectors head to tail to show how the two vectors together cause the resultant. Draw the polygon of forces that act around the knot. In this case, the polygon has three sides. What are the angles between the vectors? In this question, you must explain why wet washing on a line can pull down the poles of the washing line. The line is made of wire. That won't stretch. When there is no washing on the wire, the wire is straight. But now look at this diagram. When a wet towel that weighs 20 newtons is hung in the middle of the line, the poles bend a little and the wire makes an angle of 10 degrees below the horizontal. Vector T is the tension in the wire. T has two component vectors, a vertical component of 10 newtons and a horizontal component that you must work out. The vertical downward component of 10 newtons is caused by one half of the weight of the towel. The other half of the towel's weight causes another vertical component at the other end of the wire. First of all, sketch the situation for yourself. Write the angle theta, which is 10 degrees, and write the other force you know. What is the horizontal component of the tension in the wire? Here's a hint. If you can find a right angled triangle in your sketch, then you can use a trig function. Try the sine or tan functions. You'll need a calculator. If this just looks like abstract math to you, you can try this with a friend. Each of you must hold one end of a rope and put a 2 liter bottle full of water in the middle. Its weight is 20 newtons. Then try to pull the rope tight so that it makes a horizontal line with the bottle in the middle. You'll feel what the washing line pole fills and you may be surprised. Now see what the maths tells you. Compare the magnitude of the horizontal force that tries to bend the pole with a 10 newtons vertical force that helps to hold the towel up. You might be surprised at how much greater the force on the pole is than the weight of the towel on the line. Remember that each pole holds up half the weight of the towel. 
Now that you know how to calculate the horizontal component, let's use the same method to think about this. If you made the wire tighter, so that it sagged only half as much, that is, only 5 degrees, would you have to double the horizontal force? You can use the same method of calculation that you used before. If you did not get the calculation correct, here is a hint. Again, the answer could surprise you, but the maths gives us the explanation. As the angle theta gets smaller, tan theta also gets smaller. When you divide by a smaller and smaller number, the answer gets bigger and bigger. Here's a final challenge. Work out the tension T in the wire when the wire sags at an angle of 10 degrees and the wire must hold up half the 20 newton weight of the wet towel. You will need a different trig function for this. Well, I hope you will try hard to complete all these questions on force vectors. This is not the easiest section in the year, but work with a friend and keep going until you know how to get all the answers. The answers are in the series guide, of course, at www.mindset.co.city forward slash learn. Take care and goodbye.